Okay, can you hear me? Gil, you got to unmute. Okay, got to unmute, yeah. All right, sorry about that. Hi, Mama Z. Hi, Saloon Girl. Hi, yep. uh, Michael. Hey, uh, Teresa and Lee at Stringfield Ridge Farm. All righty. Um, yeah. Today, yesterday and today have been absolutely nuts. Um, I don't know if you guys have been following uh, some of Uncle Al's warnings out there about the weather and stuff. Well, yesterday it was friggin' nuts here in the uh, Northwest. Um, I got a video I'm going to be putting out here after the live here. I'm still working on it. But basically what happened yesterday at about 3.30, the prevailing wind, which 90% of the time or 95% of the time, it blows from the south by southwest to the north northeast. So from me, blows up towards Yellowstone. About 3.30, 3.15, it was nice and warm. We had 87 degrees yesterday, and uh, it was a nice breeze coming from the south. And in 15 minutes, it did a complete flip-flop, and it was a, a, a strong wind coming down from uh, the northeast, north by northeast. By um, 4.30, it had gotten so bad, we had... 70 mile an hour winds with 100 mile an hour gust power went out in several places in town here and the town's not that big uh there were there are big branches that came out uh, down out of trees and stuff and then all of a sudden the i mean the temperature just dropped and next thing you know it's hailing and i thought i was down there next to the broussards in louisiana in the middle of a hurricane that's how right. bad it was here Folks, I just got a message on my phone. I got the tablet going on. I got this going on. My phone said we lost. We have blizzard condition in Colorado. We have blizzard condition in Wyoming. It's 50 degrees in Montana. Other areas, it's 20 below. Yeah. Yeah, the one area yesterday in Montana. Um, Bear they, Lodge. Yeah, you know, the, you know, there was another one, too. The, you know, the bear lodge had what two and a half inches. This other one I saw on the on the news, guys standing out there, and there's at least four inches of snow on Labor Day. Yeah, I oh. made a mistake on that. I had the decimal point over. I thought it was going to be 25 feet. Yeah. The um, but Michelle, no, we did not get snow here. That may come tonight because um, hang on one second, take a look, see at it here, right here, real quick. Uh T. Base Salt, Idaho, running the National Weather Service. And it says it's 57 degrees out right now. It was a lot warmer earlier today. Um, I mean, it, it got really warm, but the wind was still blowing. We're supposed to get down to, let's see what it, what it shows here. Um, yeah, well, okay, they raised it up. Now we're getting to a low of 29 degrees tonight. Um, this morning it said 24 degrees. So... Oh, Brass Star says it's 82 in southern New Mexico. Uh, New Mexico, be careful because I, I, I'm still figuring out the figures. You might drop from 82 down to maybe 35 because this thing is unpredictable. It's going straight down. I don't know if it's hit, going to hit Texas, Arizona, or Oklahoma or whip the other way because of the cor cor uh, how the earth moves, east yeah. to west. Yeah. That way it's going to be, oh, dear Lord. Yeah. Okay. And we've got some rain in the region. Not going to his house yet. Uh, so, um, yeah, so anyways, and this is, and actually this weather kind of plays into the topic tonight, storing your food storage, you know, protecting it, you know, how to keep it safe. And if you're having big temperature changes, you can't be keeping it in certain areas. Uh, like I got a cargo container, a couple cargo containers out here. The only thing I can keep out there is dry bulk food. All right. Hey, Megabias. Hey, how's it going? All right. All right. So let's uh, slip over here and let's see what we got going on here. Okay. So storing your food storage. Let's take it down one. All right. You know, basically keeping it safe so you don't wind up 
losing what you store. All right. And we're going to talk basically about three things tonight. We're going to talk about glass, cans, and dry bulk. Now, everyone's commented about the picture behind me. Let me sw switch here. So we see about this picture here and everything else. That is not my food storage. I, I have a, a little bit of a beef with this picture. And we're going to get back into that here here when we get, uh, get into the glass here. Picture behind me and the picture now up on the screen here. I have a little bit of a beef with them. Can anybody out there guess? Hey, Tibor. Hey, Can Tibor. Can uh, uh, guess what I don't like about the picture I use as a backdrop and the one here on the screen here? One thing very simple, and we'll get to it here. Yeah, people can start typing in there, but and here's something else. I have seen, I, I, another thing I've seen people do. It's like, uh, no. All right, this at least has a, has a lip on it. But there, you put a jars on a rolling surface. Hey, Steve. Hi, Steve. Uh, got um, Mac. Uh, the Holodeck Maccabeus got it. It's not earthquake proof. So if I go back up here, one. Yeah, a little, you get a little shaker, even a 2.5. All these jars, they're coming off the shelf. They'll be flying off the shelf. Look how tight are they packed. Yeah, and how th and, and these are thin, so the walls right up against us, it just bumps a little bit, and they all come off. So, Right. That's oh, what I, uh, that, hi, Ray. That's what I don't like about stuff. Uh, Urban Grandpa Prepper, hey, how's that's it going? Ray. Ray's easier. <laughs> Ray. Hey, Ray. All right. Uh so um, no, I don't. I, the bands on the jars aren't you know aren't a big deal, but yeah, Michael also added no lip on the shelves, and that's the biggest thing that has problems with um, food storage. Uh, my mom found out in California uh, with just a light one, she lost about five or six jars. Is all she lost, luckily, and so um, the next day. We started putting, she had us put, get to go out and get some um, eighth inch thick balsa wood, uh, two inches tall, and we glued lips on all the shelves where she had jars. Hi, Celia. Yeah, Steve got it too. Everything's going to fall off the shelf. Mom and Z says, not everybody gets earthquakes. Um, <laughs> everywhere, you, you check US, just everywhere in the United States gets an earthquake at least once a year. It may only be a 1.2 or a 2.4, and they don't realize what it is. But everybody got it. In fact, uh, Uncle Al, what was the what was England's earthquake uh, this week? Oh, 5.4. 5. 5.4 5. in England. They never have earthquakes in England. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, and my 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 earthquake tracking is. I was just going nuts with all the ones over 6.0. That have been gone on in the last 10 days. It's enormous. Anyways, so here's a, on this one here. It's like uh, canned foods. Yeah, that's okay. You can put canned foods on the sides. Um, glass jars and stuff. Uh, no, because you pull one out. It rolls down. They'll go clack, 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 clack. And one of the times it's going to be clack, 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 crunch. And then you have goo all over the place. Now, this one here, I'm going to make this large here so you guys can get a better view of it. I saw this. My first thought, oh, neat. And my second thought was, oh, shit. Pardon my French, folks. All right. So these glass jars are held on by the lip just below the band. That right in this little channel here. Two things wrong with this. One, if that metal fatigues over time, it starts to spread, they're going to start dropping. Or two, you get any type of bridge and truck driving down the street, vibrating. And they can just vibrate right on off because looking at how they're, they're bracketed and put on, those things when uh, those things underweight are going to start tipping down. And so then they'll be aiming down. Any vibration, those jars are just going to go. Whoop. This so is that why they go ahead, uh, Gil. This is someone's great idea. He made a lot of money at it, but people are going to be paying the price for it. Right. The same system was used in World War II on German bombers. Why did Germany don't do this anymore? Because their bombers blew up before anything came to them. Because the vibration 
shook the bombs off. So imagine all these jars shaking at the same time instead of having one or two jars. Hi, Kathy. Uh, you'll have every one of them falling off onto yeah. the floor on you. So we've seen some bad things. So let's, uh, I think I got good things coming up now. All right. So this is just, this is just one picture. All four pictures is one off of YouTube. Um, you got, they got their, their jars here up here on the upper left. Now on the, on the upper right, they got some jars just sitting on the shelves. Others, they got them back in the boxes. Uh, and here they, uh, you know, still the, uh, still the canning jar boxes. So they're using the canning jar boxes over. Um, one of the things that happens when, um, well, actually, let me run a little video here for you guys. If I can find it here, get it up here. And let's see this one. Uh, yeah, let's see if it'll run here. Okay. All right, so this is downstairs in uh, my basement. Now, we got all the cans, and we got them in, in the bo in boxes. Uh, sorry, my aim is a little off there. Trying to move things around and, and shoot really quick here earlier. Showing to the expiration. So I got them, I got them stacked up with the oldest stuff on top and, and bottom. I was talking with my daughter about this, and she's going to be redoing these jars here like and put them in like here. These boxes... It won't fall off, but I still don't like those because those aren't a high, tall enough for what I would like to see for jars. They can see all the all the different foods and stuff we got stored, and I like these shelves from um, Sam's Club. They come with the liners on them, where the ones from Costco doesn't. Now you can just take any box like this and cut it and cut it down so it's high. Now you put the quart jars in that box; they'll do just fine. Now the shell, these shelves are down there. These shelves are coming out next year, because uh, there's on one side he put the guy put wedges in it, and the other side it doesn't, so I can't put anything heavy on them. Right. Now I well, like these. I like these things here. This is uh, really good for the cans. It's uh, first in, first out. But uh, yeah, May, I got Megan starting to put her jars back in the uh, boxes. Now I took a big, big heavy duty box that I bought some shelving material in, and I just cut the lip on it. That jar will not fall out unless we have a have a 6.0 earthquake. But it, you can put quarts, pints. That's a half gallon in there. And so, this is just uh, uh, one of the stuff I uh, we my daughter and I have set up down in the basement. But she's starting to put her stuff back in the um, back in the um, original boxes that the things come in. Now I hate the way the canning companies have gotten lane here. The, um, the the old, I'll show you here in a second here when I go to the next one here. The, 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 see how low that is? You got most of the glass exposed and everything. Right. Uh, one second, folks. I'll be right back. I hear something weird going in back. Yeah. Let me just go to the next one. So this is out in the cargo container. Hey, look at the old boxes. They cover the jars units. completely. Uh, uh, really good. Actually, I wanted to skip that one. I did it wrong. There we go. Okay, so we got uh, storage shelves here. Metal ones you can get at uh, Sam's Club or Home Depot or Costco. Um, great for storing a lot of weight on them. As you can see here, got uh, two 50 pound bags of wheat and three sacks, uh, 50 pound sacks of rice. Cardboard boxes are great. Recycle them, put the jars in it. More jars. Unlike the new boxes, which don't have lids, they only come part way up. The older ones here actually had lids, and were better for protecting the jars all the way. But if these uh, go by the wayside, time wears them out, and uh, you get a lot of uh, jars in paper box boxes. Uh, boxes from Costco, Sam's Club, pick up the, old, the boxes for your stuff and works out good. Um, these black and yellow containers that you get at Sam's, Home Depot, Costco, uh, Lowe's, oh, Lord. Target are great. 
And, uh, put, your, put your stuff in here. And these things snap on really good, nice and tight. And so, yeah. Yeah, that looks all good, folks. But remember, Spirit. make sure your shelves are bracketed to the wall. Anyway, you don't yeah. want... You don't want a one shelf to fall on top of you. Yeah. Down in the basement, the new ones they have come with, uh, I mean, they come with four shelves. And actually what I did here is I took the fourth shelf, put it up here, took the fourth shelf off that one, put it down there. So basically I got 18 feet shelves to pile stuff on. Uh, Looks good. Instead of just 12 feet. Yeah. So let me go ahead and get that out of there. So, um, yeah, we're in the process of, up, you know, like we're still like this one, this picture here where we had some uh, in jars that we haven't been. But my daughter's been throwing all the uh, Amazon boxes out in the garage. Well, we're going to start cutting the Amazon boxes down so we have nice lips on them or you can put stuff in it. And let's see, Keith Conk Keith Cronk has come in, uh, yep. Mary Beth Smith, uh, Cecilia Jansen, Kentucky Survivalist, Kaylin's uh, here. here, Kathy Northstar Prep Setters here. I'm going up the, con the thing. Okay, yeah, it looks like uh, let's see everybody. Yeah. So the next picture here. Yeah. Hey, hey you're going to do do single wide. Um, shelves and stuff hey throw a board on it but this one in here is they went and recycled um pallets and so this is pallet boards they just put on the front to uh protect their jars hey a simple uh one by two material works great keeps the jars in there keeps them from hitting the ground yeah and even your empty jars, you can store them that way if you want to and, you know, until you start putting the full jars up there. Um, this guy made made a little uh, shelf, shelf system here. The top shelf here, I notice is sloped. The only thing I don't like about that is you pull a jar out here, they could all slide forward and train wreck, bam, 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 and one of the jars is going to crack after time. Hey, Robert. Hey, Robert. Now they have this. Now you want to spend some money. They have these things here out there that have um, that you can put you know your jars in and stuff. You can get these things around. And let's uh, go to the next one here. I've also seen these being sold. If you just uh, I just googled this. this was one of the ones that from a uh, site where they're selling them. Or if you're real handy and crafty, hey, you can build one of these really easy. And it will definitely protect your jars. And if you build the sides up taller so that they can stack one uh, on the other without being on the jar lids of the one below it, hey, great. And you can get the, uh, they sell the boxes for quartz. So you can buy these, um, just, you know, go, on, go online and Google it and it'll be there. All right, let's see. Or you can, if you get milk crates and stuff, hey, you just cut up, cut up cardboard, you know, not just so one, one's not just way, those not that way, and they just slide pieces slide together and make yourself your own dividers, keep your jars nice and safe so they don't plank together. And then if you're worried about just storing your empties, they got, you know, nice uh, plastic ones you can do. You could put full jars in here, but I wouldn't stack more than too high and i even be leery about doing too high on these because the pressure might hit the lids and then you have instead of one bursting you might have everything bursting and then you have a box of goo yeah <coughs> excuse me they do make these uh for those of you that got that are rolling in the dough they make these uh heavy duty plastic um ones that uh you can stack a, a lot on but um like I said, you got to be rolling in the dough. I, I priced some of those on. It's like, oh, man, sticker shock. Yeah. But All they're right. American made, and they're made by the Amish. Yeah. They make money. <laughs> yeah, they own, the, they own the stock in the company. So um, 
cans. Everybody stores cans. Now, Shelf Reliance has a lot of different models. They have probably 15 different models of uh, what they call can, so can sorters. And we happen to have one of the big ones in, back at the house in California. And But we've got the one where it has this, uh, takes the small cans. And so for we got like one, two, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Got like eight rows of these on there. And um, the bottom one is open, and we just have the number 10 cans slid in, stacked in the, top, in the bottom. And then on top, I made a shelf on top, and we got toilet paper up on top and paper towels. So we used the space above it as well. And then uh, the, another one you can go out and buy. This is uh, also this is uh, made by uh, put out by Thrive, but it's basically based on the same thing. Right. For the number ten cans, that looks like a couple of years worth of food to me. Oh yeah. And let's <laughs> say hello to Anthony. Hey Anthony. Hey. If you want to come up, come up here and share how you s share stuff back there in the Carolinas, I sent I emailed you the link earlier. And then uh, this is uh, a real neat one. We have several of these ones here. Each one of these little notches up on top, you can move these across so you can match any size can. Some of the ones, you they have like three different size pegs to put between them. And some cans you can't do. This you can do any cans from tuna cans up to, you know, how, you know the, the, uh, the big, huge, um, even bigger than these Hormel ones, uh, the... Um, the big baked bean cans will fit in these. Right, the 16 ounces. Yeah. Now, you know, the, the 24 ounces. 24 ounces, all right. Yeah, the big ones. Now, guys, this, I've seen these go for pennies on the dollar uh, when a restaurant closes down or a commissary closes down, any type of restaurant type stuff goes out of business. You know, these are great for storing uh, cans on. They have them not only for the number 10 cans, but the smaller size cans as well. So um, it's, uh, you, if you check for places, restaurants and um, commissaries and stuff like that going out of business you can, uh, or upgrading their, their equipment, you can probably pick these up really cheap, pennies on the dollar. And what's neat about them, they got wheels so you can move them around. And you can always change you know, modify it with a little plywood like yourself. Now, if you're remodeling your kitchen and you want to be able to get to all of them, they make these little nice little uh, can stacker things that you can use. So the first day, it's first in, first out. You can make these uh, or buy these wooden ones. Either way, they I've seen these for sale, but you can also you know, get the pattern and make it yourself. If you're handy, where you can just uh, stack them up and just, you know, go for it. Uh, internet's bad for you. It keeps buffering. All right, Anthony. Ryan the Gamer's in the house. Hi, Ryan. All right. Um, now, these I found kind of interesting. If you have a, in the back of a closet, you can put, you know, put a narrow shelf on the back of the closet and for your cans. Or... Next one here? Nope, it's not. But yeah, you can get the you can buy you can get to buy the little brackets or make it yourself, so that it just you know you put your cans in, you stack it up, and you just pull the ones off the bottom. Uh, people make all sorts of homemade ones. You know, some of the shelves are flat for the jars and stuff, and then they have their cans rolling down. But and then on the bottom they got their big stuff. This is an interesting one because they put it you know under a window here or whatever. And you, they use tabletop. They can use it for whatever they want to and they hide their food storage inside of it so this is the front view and this is the end view where it comes off the end and the end view looks like they have the carpet thing that goes up in front to hide it so kind of a neat idea and yeah you can, you know making these are not that hard a couple two by fours some one buys some plywood yeah uh, any, you can fit them around anywhere. You can build them through the areas you, you're working in. Yeah. Uh, what I like about this one here is it goes halfway down, and they got a, a stop, a, some stops here. So the can stop halfway down, and they pull this one off, 
and you have another spot here to load for the second half for this outside for the outside closest to you now the back rows go all the way down so that'd be stuff you use a lot of i like about this one too wheels more wheels yep. on the bottom you can wheel it around move it where you need to move it but, but once uh, you once you get your position make sure you bracket it you don't want the thing during earthquake rolling down coming after you now if you look down on the wheels very uh, you can't hardly see it here but on each side of these wheels, they got the, those locking tabs. So they bought the locking uh, casters on it so they can lock it in place. Now, this is this is the other one I was thinking about. This should have been back with the other uh, a vertical one. If you have an extra wide hallway, but not wide enough to put shit, big, you know, 12 inch wide shelves on, hey, put this along one wall. You can store a lot of food and not lose any space in the house. And you could do uh, like this one uh, prepper did. You could put a panel of plywood in front of it, and it looks like another wall. Yeah, put paneling up. So you have a sliding panel do doors on it, but it looks like a paneled wall. That'd be real cool. Uh, here's a picture of a guy starting laying his out, getting ready to build his. So, it, you know, for spacing on how it works. And there are a lot of videos out there on actually how to build these. I saw a few of them. And there are plenty of plans out there for how you're going to stack it. Are you going to do cubes, uh, zigzag roll, or just single rolls? Now, Kaylin had a good question. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't have a workspace, and she lives in a tiny little apartment. I can't, I can't remember what they call those things. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, Kaylin. I have stroke issues, so I don't remember. I, I know what they used to call the single apartments what you can do is take old suitcases yeah and you, you, and you make that uh you can make it into a little pantry you put all your canned stuff in there i do not recommend it for jars but canned stuff dry stuff not a problem yeah and you can say uh, if you're if you have space under your bed um you know Cardboard, you know, they can get cardboard boxes. You shove the box, cut it to the height that go under the bed, and you can just use that. Like that, like this one here. So you have a, pad, a pantry that has a corner shelf in it. Sometimes the stuff back in the corner gets forgotten about. Install Lazy Susans. Yep. And that way, you, you know, stuff goes around and you can get stuff out. Let's say, all hi, say Martha. Martha finally made it. Hey, Martha, old school prepper. Studio apartment, is that what you were thinking about? Uh, yes. Yes. That okay. was the word. Yeah. Anthony came up with it. One eye on the TV, one eye on YouTube. Fire is still 45 miles away, but prepared. Okay. Oh. Well, well, everyone, key, uh, say a little prayer for uh, Martha Old School Prepper that the fire stays away from her. Now, the fire here in California above us. We have that's not rain clouds up there, folks. We have like 96 degrees. That's from Elvera and it's burning. They just gave a mass evacuation order and they dragged some people out because well, I'm gonna stay here. This is fine. No, you're getting out. The deputy sheriffs put people into squad cars, and by the time they look back at their trailer, it's on fire and it's burning down to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, they learned that up in Northern California with the um, uh, Santa Rosa fire up there. Well, it's not going to come in the city. It burnt out uh, five or six big neighborhoods. Whole housing tracks burnt to the ground. But let's get back to this. All right. So uh, what about meat? Okay. Um we got to do a whole separate video. Uh, yeah, live well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, touch on something here right now. Right now, to answer that, uh, if you're doing meat um, in another, let's say it's, it's eight, so in about uh, another six weeks, we have a uh, uh, steer going into the butcher. When we get it back, my daughter's got the pressure canner. We got it all up and going and running. We got, you saw all those jars in the video I showed earlier up there of what we have stored out in the cargo container. She's going to be canning uh, meat 
just you know, canning plain meat, you know, like uh, roasts and stuff in, in the jars, making beef stew, making chili. She's looking up recipes for chili. And so we're going to do, she's going to be doing all sorts of stuff. And then, she, you know, we have three chest freezers and one upright out in the garage. So I'll the cover one, all. The, the one ahead, is Jay. empty. The one is empty. The nine cubic foot uh, chest freezer is empty, waiting for beef. Right. Now, I'll cover the other things that it's covered in this one, guys. Okay. Because if you have a lot of beef, you have to do other things. This one's the easiest. I'm going to get a hernia. I swear to God. I book. tell people to get this one. Great book. Okay. Because it'll cover salting and air cooling meat. That's curing. Now, if you don't know what you're doing with it, you have to read it and take a class. Because if you goof up on salting or air curing, you poison yourself. That's called botulism. Yeah, okay, Tibor has a, has a comment here. Anyone ever have cans from different companies react to each other and yes. grow the seal? Well, I've had Campbell, Campbell stew react with Stokely vegetables. They're different. Yeah. Uh, um, it's called electrostatic cling. Each uh, binary metal on the cans are charged. So if you have a Stokely and you have Campbell, it's positive and negative. When they combine, guess what happens? Yeah, you get electrolysis from one to the other. Right. So you have to be really careful. I probably separated with cardboard uh, like this, upright. You know, as long as they're not touching yep. each other. And the big thing is on the pull top lids, be really careful on those because that is a binary metal, not like the regular steel top. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hi, P2E. Hey, Martha, I'm sorry. Hey, yeah, uh, PTE, hi. Martha, I'm sorry, but when you posted that, the, what popped into my mind was an old movie. With Charles Bronson, um, oh, I just lost some of the other characters. Um, the Mad Miner or Mad? No, no, Trapper? no, no, no. Charles Bronson um, from Bullet. Uh, Steve McQueen, and I can't remember all the names. But the Great Escape. Right. Spoons, we're digging our tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to the picture. Yeah, so you got uh, Lazy Susans to help uh, rotate your stuff out and keep the stuff from getting trapped in the back corner and lost and forgotten. And uh, one of the simplest ones I've seen is where they took um, plywood with some laminate on it. And then they uh, I've seen several types where they've taken just those those clip bracket shells, you know, and it, the, 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 the runners, they just put, use that for down here to keep the cans to uh, – so the cans can uh, – Run. Hey, now, Butch. Hi, Butch. At, uh, Sand Hollow Homestead. Oh, yeah. Uh, Anthony had a question on his problem because he has uh, bedrock underneath. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can make above ground root cellar. You use cinder blocks. You dig all the way down to the bedrock because Gil and I know how to do uh, cinder block. Do not use the sandbag method. Yeah, uh, Alaskan prepper, uh, not Alaskan prepper. It's Alaskan couple up there. They made a underground pit, but they lined it with sandbags and rebar. Do you know what happens when you have soil that's really soft pushing against sandbag walls? They collapse. Yeah, and they also they had three feet of water. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, yeah, the, the above ahead, ground, man. the above ground, uh, or partially above ground. Uh, um root cellars you dig out all the dirt you can also get you know get like a cargo a 20-foot cargo container brought in you put that in there and then you mound the dirt up up over it but you also need you know, the cargo containers aren't made to have a lot of pressure on the side or on the roof only on the corners so um you can get uh you just need to make sure you brace the inside uh if you get a high cube which is a nine foot high inside 
you have you can brace it with two uh two by fours and stuff to support the extra weight but um yeah you can make uh, uh the the steel uh gets uh, stays nice and cool when it's against the dirt right but also you have to be careful because again anthony's situation he's in red clay right is it red uh, clay or sand i'm not sure but you got to watch out, also on this. You got to watch out for water coming up through the floors on the, the wooden floors on the cargo containers. They're not steel right. floors unless you want to pay the big bucks and get the military grade ones. And uh, let's get back to the. Yeah. Okay. Now we're. Oh, I forgot to put in the leader. Okay. So now we're into dry into uh, into bulk foods dry. So uh, everybody know what this is? This is a gamma lid on a five gallon bucket. It's one of the great ways of uh, storing stuff. If you were here for that video I, ha I showed earlier, um, you notice I had um, some wheat out there, though, and especially double bagged, heavy. I mean, this is some some thick rubberized bagging material for the wheat. It can be stored in that bag for 50 years, according to the manufacturer. But gamma gamma lids are great, so you need to get in. You can take stuff out. You just drop your oxygen absorbers or your mo moisture absorbers in there to keep the stuff in. Now, uh, you know, if your uh, buckets are going to be away for the or, uh, on an area that's not going to have light all the time, white's fine because it's a little translucent. If it's in the dark area, it's better. Um, but if you're going to be doing uh, out where it gets more light or in, in, like out in the garage where it's always getting the light in and stuff when the door opens, you want to get colored, colored ones. Colored ones, uh, buckets, um, restrict the light more. But uh, you do not have to do what they did here. Oh, I'm going to match the blue lid with the blue band on the blue bucket. Uh, that's nice and pretty, but you don't have to do that. In fact, if you mix it up. Oh, okay. So the green lids on the yellow buckets, that's the uh, corn. The yellow lids on the green buckets, that's the green beans. Uh, the white lids on the white buckets is the white lot rice. The red lids on the white buckets is the brown rice. <laughs> hey, color code it. You got, you, they come in colors. They're all the same price. Might as well do it. And then finally here, this is a, a unique um, setup here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here for a second. So they got their shelving unit. Um, it's not on wheels. It's a permanent lock. And then that the, they got baskets for jars and stuff. They got uh, plastic um, little slide out uh, tote thing uh, tubs here to have uh, or, uh, jars in it as well. They got dry bulk food up above. Uh, they got bulk, big bulk uh, stuff down below. They got more jars down here and some of these plastic things on, on the on the bottom, oops, sorry, I'm on the wrong screen there, down on the bottom. So you got all sorts of neat things here on the wire rack shelves to store dry goods, liquid goods, bulk foods. But what is the difference between this and some of the homemade stuff we talked that we showed earlier? Money. Yep. Yeah, this costs a little bit more. Now, I want to pull something up here real quick here. See if I can do it here. That one. I, that one. I want to see if I did this one right. Let's hang on, guys. Is this the right one? Okay. Nope. Is yeah, that? this is I went back in. Uh, what, my mom left us a bunch of, of uh, canning stuff. And in one of the boxes, I opened it up, and this box was in there. And lo and behold, there are... 15 rows, I mean, 15 per row, four rows of um, canning lids that we didn't know we had until my wife started digging into the corner where all my mom's canning jars were at. And she pulled that out. And so basically, each box had 12 lids, 15 per row so that's 144 plus 36 so it's 160 lids per row four rows in that box 
So that's four times 160. So Gil just hit a gold mine because in some places you cannot find that many lids. You can't find, I, you can't get a case of those anywhere anymore right now. No, and let's say hello to Going Green Mom. Hey, Going Green Mom. Yeah, and so um, what's out there is there there you know there's a lot of different ways. It use your imagination. Think of think of something you see. Go go online. Google. Um, can it, what did I do? I googled. Um, storage systems for glass canning jars and i got a whole bunch of different things up and then you know um uh, storage shelves for cans for rotating cans and you just look and you find out all sorts of neat uh ideas out there and you find out which one is going to work for you and let me check something out here real quick okay here again. on um going green um, Mom, if you're in a central state, that's a transportation issue. Because my friends who are truckers says Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky. Uh, I forget uh, the other one. Hang on. Uh, Costco, let me Sam's Club. Kill that. There we go. Sorry. Okay. Um, Kentucky, Tennessee, they have a transportation issue. And it's, well, we won't say the D word here, but you go ask them why they're holding up all the bikes and canning lids in one distribution area and they can't reach indiana isn't that crazy a bike shortage a canning lid shortage yeah so i'm, I'm trying to get something here set up here real quick here catch it just right and eh, there we go throw this back up here so walton wheat comes from walton grain this is a double bag. Is a double bag. The outer bag is a is almost like a raincoat slicker material. The old yellow raincoat slickers. All right, and it's uh, the wheat in here. It's a uh, hard red wheat for home storage. Uh, triple cleaned and vacuumed. Uh, low moisture can be sprouted. No chemical additives. Uh, no no chemical add for weevils because of the way they heat treated it. And um, professionally packaged for long-term storage, heat-sealed inner bag. Yeah, and so that's one of the bigger. Bleh. It's one of the better, better bags. Yeah, okay. and it, the Walton wheat or Walton grain. Um, they have other things besides wheat. They have barley and everything else, but uh, that's a uh, um, a good thing. And things uh, we had a friend, some friends of ours were moving. They were retiring. Moving from California to Texas to be near their grandkids, didn't want to take all their food storage stuff they had with them, and they gave us 800 pounds a week. So that's where yeah. we got that from. But yeah. back on the side chat, we have Morning Light. Welcome, Morning Light. You finally made it after time. I hate YouTube. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, excuse me. And so they, uh, this for you just come in here. So this, I was, one of the, this is out in one of my cargo containers. And the, the shelving system here I got from Sam's Tub came with four shelves. And so, and these shelves will hold 750 pounds. So I got a bunch of those. And, and here's a, oh, oh, come on back up there again. I can see, all right. These boxes from Costco are heavy-duty boxes. They're great for storing canning jars in. And if you don't want them that high, hey, you can just cut it right across here all the way around. And the jar will sit in there. It won't bounce out, but you can lift it out easily off the shelves. If you have, if you have the shelves close together, like I showed for the, my basement. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Bouncing around. So, yeah, so I, I, basically I put three shelves each and I use the extra two shelves to make extra long space on that one. But, yeah. Let's see if I can. Okay. So those use, this is what I have down in my basement. Let me run back here again. Hang on here. Verse. 
So I got a couple of the wire uh, racks here. We got to keep the cans. Uh, we try to buy the cans in the, in the flat cases, the good ones. Of course, sometimes we got to get the ones where they cut the front off of them. And of course, if you're worried about that, you can just run uh, like the top one here has tape wrapped around it. So I know to use the bottom one first until I get it restored. This is all stuff my daughter canned this year. She made je uh, jellies. So I got beet jelly and she's got uh, apricots and pickles. But you see in the paper thing, it keeps it from bouncing off the shelf easily. And then um, we'll get down to the box. box there. Okay, the, the ones from Sam's Club have these uh, shelf liners on them. They're great. You can take any box and just cut, cut it down so it makes a great holder for the jars or cans so they don't bounce around. The guy before me built these shelves and just stuck two-by-fours in there so keep it from sagging on the one side. So all we're going to put on those is going to be empty jars, but these uh, uh, food so uh, sorters, first in, first out ones are great. And my daughter started putting the uh, jars back in the uh, boxes. But then I took the uh, boxes from some uh, smaller shelf units and I just cut the lip out so your jars will sit in there and not fall out. Those are half-gallon jars of uh, beans, bacon, and garlic. <laughs> but, yeah, so... No, hey, you can uh, get, the, get the flats that are uh, uh, full like that. Let me. Uh, okay, go up to the the. Is that peaches? Everybody notice what the little arrows pointing next to. The peaches right here. Right. What's the device you have right there next to it? Uh, this right here. Yeah. In front of it. That's a thermometer. And why do you have to have a thermometer inside a storage area, folks? Yeah, I got. If there's two thermometer centers, there's one there, and there's one back, a little paper one, a uh, uh, glass one with a paper backing on it that has been on those shelves since he built those shelves. I mean, I haven't seen those those ones with the glass backing on it. Um, I don't know, see if I can find that real quick, you guys. So get ready. We're gonna go backwards. Is it gonna go down to it? Uh, no, it's on, it's down on that post down lo lower near the bottom. So I got the one down low and then we have the other one up. Uh, got the other one halfway up there. And then, uh, by the door coming down into the basement, there's another one just up high. So we can see what the te temperature differences from bottom to top. And so hopefully it will remain nice and temperately cool all winter long. And plus and that's in the basement where I can close the door off to that. And that will be totally separate from the rest of the basement. Right. And also, folks, it has to be dry. Now, Rob Painless has his, but he didn't put enough insulation on top of the roof. So when you walk down there, it's like, how hot is it in there? 80? Yeah. Well, yeah, the uh, this this little room that this is in, there's um, eight inches of insulation above it from the from the uh, the living room above. Now, the only thing I do have to add add in there, I've got it. I just haven't put it in there yet. I got to wire some more electrical in there, so I can put in there a dehumidifier to make sure that room stays dry and cool. Right. But yeah, so. Um, and kicking back to what we talked about, was it on last Tuesday or was it Friday? We did the uh, Friday. I think it was Friday when we talked about the um, the supply rush and everything else. Right. Um, I today I picked up. Go back down. Another flat of the uh, Rosarita, uh, twenty four cans per flat. Um, refried beans, um, fat free. And go back over here to the top up here. I picked up uh, two more boxes of Great Nor two more flats of Great Northern. And where's the other one here? Um, down here. Is it down there? Uh, I got to go back, back just a little bit down. Uh, okay, it's not showing. It. But I found some, some really cool here. Maybe I'll find it here. It goes down a little bit. Yeah. Ah, uh, come on. 
You know, it's right the apple beans. juice or black beans? It's not the black beans. It's um, Dickies. Dickies barbecued beans. And they were on sale uh, at, at Winco. So, hey, guess what I got? I got a couple flats of those as well. So, um, let me go bring it back up to just us. So, you know, the, with those um, shelving racks, the other thing that uh, we can do is some other things to add to it um, to help secure them. You can get Velcro strips uh, that you can uh, basically it's got a uh, it's got a little turnbuckle on it. You wrap it around the one post, run it over, and the other end has Velcro has the Velcro strip on the elastic. You pull it around and you put it on the side. Let me see if I can get this back over here. So I'd put it uh, I can put it across the front, or I could put it along the side, going back along the side of the jars or the cans are like over here from this post to the back post and that'll keep anything from falling bouncing off that way too and we'll Super check chat them. doesn't have a barter option <laughs> <laughs> okay another thing you want to have inside your can areas and jar areas is a small fan yeah and people Cir because circulate the air Right. Oh, Acer's here. Acer, uh, re, 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 rerun. Rebrum? Re, re, right. uh, yeah. All right. There he is. Yeah. You want to, you don't want it moisture to build, especially in a basement. You don't want moisture to build up where you're can, you know, you're, especially stuff that you've canned yourself because your, your lids can, can, uh, start corroding and then corroding. Pop, pop your seal real easy. And you don't want your other long-term cans to go either. Rust. Yeah. Rust or electrostatic discharge. That's why you have a fan inside your pantry. I have a small one. I have an upright one. I have two. Because I want air circulating through the whole thing. Yeah. The um, See, when I put the dehumidifier down there, it has a fan on it. So it'll, do, it'll circulate the air, dehumidify it, take care of everything all in one stop. I got a little dehumidifier off of Amazon, and if I remember, I will try to put it in the tomorrow. Put it in the description link uh, down below for this. Um, yeah, so yeah, dehumidifiers are great um, for uh, pr protecting your jar lids, protecting the cans, especially the pop top cans. Those things like to rust out like that. Because it's a bimetal system because it's easy to pull. It's a whole different metal from the bimetal of the can. So it will corrode. And if yeah. it's not kept cool and dry and not, not wet, yeah. it tends to explode. Yeah. Now, like the, uh, the, the um, Great Northern Beans I picked up today, they're, expert, they're best used by, I didn't say expert, it says best used by date is december 2023 we've used can we've used those cans are still aren't, aren't pop aren't you know you know sometimes they'll gas up and you get a on the top so long as they're not doing that we've used them five six seven years old so there's a lot of good stuff out there that you can get so long as you keep the can in good condition um who was it uh pennsylvania prepper Right. The freeze dryer guru of the YouTube. She had some cans uh, that she had in her laundry room. She learned the lesson because uh, the laundry room has moisture. Yep. You got the dryer in there. You got the uh, washer in there. And it, um, uh, she had several cans that were starting to uh, get rust spots on them. So she made a lot of... Uh, um, dehydrated pineapple. I forget what else she had in there, but then oh, oh I think she had some uh, chili, canned chili. She did too. So now, what does Maccabees says with sawdust? That's true. Get this book and read it. Yeah. Because I, I, my voice is about going out. You have to be careful on this because back to basic and root cellaring explains a 
the other portion, what's Gil doing in his basement. You have to be very, very careful. Yeah. Because and it's... It, go ahead, Gil. I just saw, popped through up the comment there from Old School Prepper. Uh, one of the canning corporations says canned foods are good and definitely us canned bulges or rust. She'll dig up that info and so... Um, so either she's either going to email it to me or she's going to do a, do her own little short video talking about canned live feed and put that in it. So if you guys aren't subscribed to Old School Prepper, check her out. Real good channel. Uh, Anthony at uh, Palmetto Prepared. Right there. Another great channel. Uh, Maccabeus Off Grid Every Every Survival. Really good channel. Uh, Corsair Trainer. Corsair's trainer. You want common sense? You want a level head? You want to not freak out and do the oh, oh dance? Steve's the one to check on. He is great for uh, br bringing everybody back down to earth. Yeah. And now, anybody, you to... there's a lot of good cha channels in the side chat here. Um, yeah. You know, if you see someone you don't know, check them out. Uh, uh, Mary Beth. That's going to be a problem because oxygen absorbers does a point, and then you have to dehydrate them like hell. Yeah, the, the moisture absorbers, things are they're easy to regenerate. If you um, put them on, on a bunch of cookie sheets, put them in the oven, 160, 175, 68. If yours will go, it will set at 168, 175 degrees for an hour or so. Should be nice and dry again. Hey, Rick. Lala Farms in the house. Another Hi. great channel. It's Rick, I think. Yeah, Rick. Hi, Rick. Rick. Rick and Little Rick. Yeah. And also, you have to crack the oven. Do not close the oven. We do not want to do what Michelle and Rob did. Set the oven on fire when you're dehydrating the oxygen absorber. Yeah. The... Uh yeah, the, there's uh, several. Of, oh, if you have a solar dehydrator, that works great also for um, de uh, for re-energizing re the uh, oxygen. I mean, the oxygen, the moisture, moisture absorber, moisture absorbers. Yeah. Also, a regular dehydrator works well too. It just takes six hours. Yeah. All right. Um, so, a little, a little extra word about what happened last night. Uh, for those that missed it when they came in. Here in southeast Idaho, where the wind blows 90 plus percent of the time from the south by southwest to the north by northeast, yesterday about 3.30 did a flip-flop, turned around, and it came back It came back down south like a freight train. We, My daughter got uh, warning alerts on her phone, 70 mile an hour winds, 100 mile an hour gusts. Yeah, it was. It was, you know, that we had power went out four times yesterday, and the guys were out here fixing it just like that. But the trees kept blowing down on on power lines. Um, I'll be putting out a video on on that short uh, shortly here, maybe tonight or first thing in the morning. But yeah, it was insane the way they've never had that type of storm here in the last fifty years. Right, um, Anthony. Um Oxygen absorber is, I forgot what chemical they use in it. Yeah. It's uh, iron compound with a reactionary. It removes oxygen. You crush it, you put it in the container, and what it does, it change reacts inside the iron compound. It withdraws all the oxygen until it goes bleh. Yeah. That doesn't recharge. You have to throw it away afterwards. Yeah. And do not eat it. It is not a spice packet. <laughs> Yeah. And anyways, so what hit us here yesterday hit Montana and South Dakota even worse. They actually got snow. And the, when, the, when the wind started coming from the north down, if you follow the path, hey, the Santa Ana winds were blowing hard, weren't they, Steve? You guys were down in Southern California. were getting your Santa Ana winds. And in Northern California, they were getting the Stockton winds. So it was coming down from us and right on across. So, yeah, it was, you know, yesterday was a windy day. It was in, in, insane. But, yeah, we, we lost uh, we lost most of our corn. Fortunately, it was all ready to be 
you know, just about all ready to be uh, harvested. So that's all coming out in that video uh, either later tonight or tomorrow. Okay. Uh, on Martha's comment, yes, I know that lady. Folks, you have to be careful. This is why we can tomatoes. We do not put it in biometal cans. Reason why? You only have a minimum of two years. Anything with an acid base or heavy sugar acid base will cause the can to discharge. And guess I'll be right what back. happens? Okay. Guess what happens to your can? Okay. It corrodes and explodes. So you don't want that. So you have to keep it at a cool, dry temperature and with air circulation on the certain cans like fruit, pineapple. Pineapple's the worst. Well, Gil's getting something. Okay. Did you get it, Gil? Did you get it? Yes. Okay, so here's the uh, pop top right around here, if I can get it right. There's an indentation here. That's right. A, that's that's where they fail because that's the thinnest where the thinnest metal is on these things. So you got about two years to eat these. This thing here says best use by September 2023. Uh, no, I these will be gone by uh, June 2021. What is that? Pineapple? No, this is uh. Sliced oh, peaches. peaches. Okay. No, yeah. no sugar added. Right. So it, it's acidic levels high enough to affect the can. Yeah. Uh, remember, I forget which uh, prepper did the pineapple one. Um, that was um, Pennsylvania prepper. Yeah. If your pineapple is going to go bad, take it out of the can, drink the juice, and dehydrate or freeze dry your pineapple. Yeah. And if it's, okay. if it's freeze dried, oh, that's like candy. Seriously, it you get a little piece of it and it's like candy. What okay. I do uh, with uh, juices, I freeze it into cubes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, pi yeah, pineapple cubes. Um, My mom used to freeze up the juice and made, made little cubes. And uh, don't freak out, people. When she made lemonade, she dropped pineapple into the lemonade. Now, this little container here. This is, um, we have several of these. Um, so this is flour. And when we get that, we get the flour in the big 50 pound bags. And then, so we just put them in a bunch of these. And then um, my daughter just, you know, makes bread. And she was baking bread yesterday. And we had to, you know, uh, uh, yesterday, the day before she was baking bread on the 6th. And we had a lot of uh, bread. Okay, what is uh, Sand Hollow saying? Yeah. Th at low of 38 this morning. Yeah. Yep. Our low here, it was going. they said it was going to be 24, uh, but now they've raised it to 29 degrees. Um, it's the low tonight. So, yeah. Who knows not, what? Who knows what it's going to be? But uh, Butch, you you may be be losing some stuff through uh, frost here. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Gil showed flour. You, uh, Harshman Hill did a demonstration twice. Be careful with flour, folks, because everybody remember what happened to Barut? That white cloud. That's flour, and what white flour and heat and. It's yeah. like he showed it. It flames up. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, yeah, and the, this these containers here, uh, Walmart, and these are for, these were uh, um, made for cereal. Do you use it for flour? We just use it for flour because it won't be in here more than a month or two, and it's going to be used. Um, See, so, you know, making bread, making pasta, whatever. Albany Mountain. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Albany Mountain. Oh, I'm tired. All right. All right. So let me get something else up here on the side side here. Okay, there we go. Um, all right. Now, I think we covered this good enough for everybody. 
Okay, on the magnesium lids, you got to be careful. Uh, they deteriorate over age, and they become magnesium oxide. And that's a no-no <laughs> if you're going yeah. to can. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Yeah. Uh, Claude, have you ever used old magnesium lids with the glass insert and wax? Now, my uh, mom used to do some jellies with the glass jars and the paraffin wax in it, and then the that has the glass lid with the um, rubber gasket on it. Those are hot water baths only. Do not pressurize them. Yes. Oh God. All right. I let remember me, when let God me did, did throw this. something up here if I can, real quick here. So get this over on the side here. There we go. Bring it up. Ah. Uh. Cool. All right, so I'm going to throw up a little side thing here. This just happened to pop up here because I had been looking at it. You you got all sorts of different size uh, can, um, these rack things to put jars in and stuff. But this is what I'm bringing up. So this is what the weather looks like now. It's still coming down from Yellowstone towards me. And it's whipping around down here and kicking some of it off as, as the um, Santa Ana's. But then it's heading back. It's doing a loop around uh, Utah and heading back up over to up into Canada here. But let's see what the weather looks like here for the next. Uh, was it ten days? Let's run it here. Right. Uh, Palmetto asks the question: the uh, porcelain ball lids. They quit using them. Reason why they had lead. The ceramic had lead in it, so they quit using it. People were dying from lead poisoning. Yeah. All right. So this is your, uh, this is what it ends up on the, uh, the 18th. So 10 days from now, I'm going to run it backwards. So you can see how a jet stream and right in here, look at all these friggin' swirls. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine and probably another one off here you know yeah it's a big it, one those just screw up the weather patterns like you would not believe so it's good it's coming down here and look what happens over utah arizona new mexico colorado and then it moves off to the east and these other swirls start moving in and yeah, I don't want to be down in Mexico. <laughs> Look at that. But, yeah, that's the weather here. That's your weather report. Does anybody have a question on their food storage area? Oh, I make sure you have a door on it because yeah. you don't want people walking in, and like my nephews, and taking things for their house. Yeah. All right. I think uh, we covered up selling stuff. So, uh, Anthony, back there with your humidity in the Carolinas, do you have problems with your uh, lids rusting or your, or your regular cans having problems with them uh, rusting? Uh, and uh, uh, is... Um, Ryan the Gamer still here. He's uh, he's Florida, isn't he? I think so. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Okay, Rick has to go to bed. Night, Rick. All right. Night, Rick. All right. So um, next, uh, the next uh, live stream is going to be Friday, Friday night special, September 11th, 9-11. 19 years ago, where were you is the topic. So 19 years ago, where were you? We're going to be talking about 9-11 and paying tribute to um first responders who uh paid the ultimate price and how it shaped this country so everyone be uh be here to help share stories and anything else you thought you might have concerned about it we are going to try to keep it non-political between the democrats and the robucans all right. 
So Good night, folks. So that's that's it for uh, Friday. Next Tuesday is twelve volt power hacks, getting you by in a pinch. All righty. And so with that, everyone out there, stay happy, stay safe, stay prepared, and we'll see you in the next video.